Let me be Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. We say thank you to you, Lord. Thank you for your mercies. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for taking care of us, O oh God. Thank you for being faithful and merciful to us, O oh God. Lord, we are grateful. We thank you from the bottom of our heart, O oh God. Oh, Father, receive our praise and thanksgiving, O oh Lord. Thank you for your children, O oh God, that have come before you today, O oh God. Lord, we lift them all before your throne of mercy, O oh God. You alone see their hearts, O oh God. Father, you are our God. Your word says that you have first love. You loved us first, O oh God, even before we loved you, O God, our precious God. We lift up the children before you, O oh God. Father, forgive us our sins. Cleanse us from all our righteousness. Give us the grace, O oh God, to seek you with all our hearts, Almighty God. Oh, Father, cleanse us from within that we will be able to come before you boldly, O oh God, boldly, O oh God, to obtain mercy even in time of need, O oh God. Oh, Father, your children are here before you. Lord, receive them, O oh God. Forgive us all our sins. Cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Wash us in the blood of your Son, O oh God. Oh, Father, Oh Father, we want to be holy, O God. We want to be set apart for you, O God. We want to obey you, O God. We want to do the right things, O God. Oh Father, for your word says, O God, that without you we can do nothing, O God. Therefore we ask for your help. Forgive us. Cleanse us from all, our, all unrighteousness. Wash us, O oh God, with the blood of your Son, Jesus, that we may come before you, O oh God, holy, O oh God, and blameless, O oh God, all oh, ready to do your will, ready to fulfill your plans for our lives, O oh God, ready to be obedient children, O oh God, ready to stop being disobedient, O oh God, ready to do your will, O oh God, ready, O oh God, O oh, Masete Shintoro we want to be holy, we want to be righteous, we want to be your children, O oh God, we want to be your children, O oh God, O oh Father, receive us, O oh God, even as we have asked for your forgiveness, O oh God. In Jesus' name, O oh God, blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Oh, Father. Cause us to be holy, Lord. Yes, Lord. I choose to be. Grace to do, O God. 
we ask for your grace, O oh Lord. Give us grace, Father, to be obedient to oh Father. Yes, Father, the grace to obey you, we ask for, oh Lord, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hello, kids. Nice to be with you again today. I hope you learned one or two things from our short drama skit. Hmm. Remember, we talked about staying connected to God and Jesus through the Holy Spirit last week. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. He also is our comforter. When we are sad that things are not going okay, He is our helper. He can help us to do really difficult things like helping us to stop telling lies. Kids, you know it's really hard to stop telling lies. But don't be afraid. Ask the Holy Spirit. He can help you. And you know what? Here's the best part, kids. Yeah? The Holy Spirit is your good friend. That's right. He always tells us the truth. He teaches us how to make good friends just like him. Wow. That's so cool. Oh, wait a minute. The Holy Spirit just reminded me. In my heart. Yes. That's where he speaks to us. He said that God does not like greedy people. Yes. God also does not like people that tell lies or bullies. God does not like people that are disobedient. Like Jonah. Yes. That was thrown inside the big fish. You know kids, God wants us to be holy if we want to be his friends. Do you remember the story of Moses in the burning bush? God told him to pull off his shoes before he can stay and have a chat with him as his friend. Kids, you must be holy to stay connected to God. I wonder what God is telling you to take out from your life before you can be his friend. Hmm. Let's see our Bible verse first. are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Matthew 5 verse 8. That's our memory verse for today. Kids, do you want to see God and be his friend and stay connected to him? Then you must be holy. You must stop telling lies. You must stop cheating, or fighting, or bullying. You must love God with all your heart and with all your soul. Today we have an exciting story about a man who chose to be holy, doing all God wanted at all costs. Let's go over now to Antis so that we can learn more. After the resurrection of Jesus, many people became believers and were baptized. One such person was Stephen. He was full of God's grace and power. When he preached, people listened. He was speaking wisdom, 
healing the sick, performing miracles, and proving the power of Christ among the people. Every day, Stephen would go into public places and tell people about Jesus. Some of the leaders and Pharisees were not happy about this. One such Pharisee was named Saul. He hated Christians and wanted to destroy them. Every day, the religious leaders looked for an opportunity to arrest Stephen. As more and more people started to believe in Jesus, the religious leaders knew they were running out of time. Some of them decided to make up lies about Stephen, spreading rumors that he was saying bad things about God. This was called blasphemy and was the perfect accusation to get rid of Stephen. One day, while Stephen was still preaching, they grabbed him and brought him before the religious council. Their evil plan finally succeeded. Stephen was dragged into court where false witnesses said, this man is saying bad things about our holy temple and the law. He is saying that Jesus will destroy the temple. He's saying that Jesus has changed the laws. What do you have to say for yourself? The leaders demanded. As Stephen began to speak, the Holy Spirit came upon him and his face started to glow. Listen to me, said Stephen. Everyone quieted down as the angel-like man began to talk. He told them all about their country's great history, their sad disobedience, and how Jesus came to change it all. In telling the story, he had to tell them about their own sin and evils. They did not like this at all. They became so angry that they decided to kill him. They seized Stephen and dragged him outside the city walls. They picked up stones and started to throw them at him. As the stones fell onto Stephen's body, breaking his bones and bruising his flesh, he did not stop praying. Instead, he continued to preach about Jesus. As he died, he cried out, Lord, do not hold this sin against them. One man standing there was Saul of Tarsus, a Pharisee who later would become the Apostle Paul. Saul at that time wanted to do everything to stop people from believing in Jesus. Later on, Jesus would appear to Saul and Saul would himself become a believer. Now, Auntie Uju has already told you the Bible verse, right? Matthew chapter 5 verse 8 Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Okay. Who are the pure in heart? Hmm? The pure in heart, they are people that the Bible considers to be holy. You see, these people, eh, they separate themselves from anything that is unclean. You know? But you might want to ask... What is unclean? What do we mean by unclean? Unclean just means in this context, sin. Sin is what we refer to as unclean. And some of examples, some examples of sin are greed, disobedience, lying, stealing, you know, all those naughty things. That's what we refer to as sin. Basically, doing things that make God unhappy. This is sin. And holy people, they don't touch or stay around anything that is unclean. They don't stay around anything that can make them do unclean things. Now, Stephen, he was an example of a holy person. You see in the Bible story, how he behaved that's how a holy person behaves spending time with God knowing God doing things that please God but why should we be holy when we are not God I know and you know also that it's only God that is incapable of sinning and we human beings will sin is it possible for us to be holy well 
Yes, it is. We are made in his image and he wants us to be holy just like he is. After all, that is what it says in Leviticus chapter 19 verse 2. And the word of God is powerful. It does not lie. Look at the life of Stephen. He achieved holiness. Remember the Bible verse? Those who are pure in heart, they shall see God. And Stephen, literally, he saw God. He saw the glory of God. It's possible for us to be holy. It's possible for a boy and a girl like you to be holy. But how? Okay, how do we become holy? You see, the first step is through Jesus. Hebrews chapter 5 verse 9 says that Jesus is the source of salvation for those who obey him. You know that by the death and resurrection of Jesus, we can go to God and say, Father, I am sorry for being greedy. I am sorry for lying. Please forgive me in Jesus' name. And guess what? God is more than happy to forgive. But when you mean it all, hmm? remember that God knows all things. And one thing about holiness is that it must come from your heart. All those things that you do to show holiness, they must come from your heart, not by pretense. You see, Stephen, his holiness, his relationship with God, every affection that he felt for God, it was real. He didn't pretend. And that was why the Holy Spirit gave him power. Okay, the second step is that you must learn more about God and how he wants you to live on earth. After you've given your life to Christ and you've confessed Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have to learn how God wants you to live here on earth. To do that, you must know more about Him. And how are you going to do it? It's to stay away from unclean things. You know those things that He doesn't like? Don't touch it. Remember that skits from above? Don't touch it. You know God doesn't like it? Don't touch it. Don't touch sin, okay? Then you need to read your Bible and pray every day. You know that song? Read your Bible, pray every day. Notice that that song also says, if you want to grow, this is what you must do. You must read your Bible and pray every day. And Stephen did this. You see, when he was in the, in the Sanhedrin, when he was answering all those questions, did you notice the way he talked about Moses extensively? You know? talked about things that happened in the time of his forefathers he couldn't have done that if he wasn't reading the bible so he read and he knew things you must read your bible you will learn things about god in the bible and when you've learned those things you write them down and do the word okay stephen did the word he also had a relationship with the holy spirit she noticed how bold he was. That's what the Holy Spirit does. The Holy Spirit teaches you all things. And it teaches you to be bold too. Okay? Stephen carried the presence of God. Did you see where it said that time that his face was shining? The glory of God was upon him. It was because of the Holy Spirit. He had that beautiful relationship. And so the glory of God was upon him upon him remember also in that story it says that the disciples wanted some men to be selected to do some work for them Stephen was chosen now if Stephen wasn't in that group do you think he would have been chosen it means that he had been in the right group of people because he wants to grow his relationship with God he wanted to know more about God that was why he was in that group of people have friends with people who love God okay okay we have learned about how we can become holy but um, can we talk about what drives us to be holy what makes us truly want to be holy it's a deep affection for God 
You know when you love somebody, you want to spend time with that person. Remember your favorite teddy bear or your favorite cartoon, your Xbox and all those things. You love them and you want to spend time with them. Can you honestly say that you love God if they say let's go to church or let's have morning devotion you're like oh I'm so tired when is church going to close ha ah, this online service is taking too long I'm tired I'm hungry I feel sleepy oh, my feet hurt my hair is itchy everything <laughs> can you honestly say that you love God when you complain in his presence or they say hey it's time for service come and sit down let's watch church and i said hmm again i just prayed now can you honestly say that you have that deep affection for god when you do that now ah but it's a deep affection for god that is the motivation it's it that is what drives us that that deep feeling that all the time i want to spend with this my xbox all the time i want to spend with this my best friend do you feel that way about god too when you feel that way about god after you've given your life to christ then you're on your way to holiness stephen he loved god so much he showed it he was in the presence of god with god's people growing himself and when he was chosen he showed the love that he had for God by caring for those people spiritually and physically. He preached to people. He defended his faith. He defended his God. Wow. I know that Stephen died a horrible death. But the emphasis of his story for us now is not on how he died but how he lived for God. That deep affection that he had for God. That was his drive. And that was his drive for a life of holiness in Christ. No one can honestly say they love God without first inviting him into their hearts. Now, will you do that? Can we invite Jesus into our hearts today? Even if we've sinned against him, can we come to him and apologize and come back and be his best friend once again? Because anytime you go away, God misses you. He wants to be with you. He wants to love you, dance with you, play with you and do all those things with you. Won't you come back to him today? And if you've never given your life to Christ before, won't you come to him today? Jesus loves you and is waiting for you. Come to him. Come to him. Okay, guys. If you're ready to give your life to Christ now, I want you to repeat after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive my sins. I want to be your friend. Purify me, Lord. So that I may do your will. I want to be holy just like you. I confess that from today you are my Lord and Savior. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Now, once you've given your life to Christ like this, the next thing is to grow 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 that's why we sing that song read your bible pray every day if you want to grow because when you read your bible god will send the holy spirit to teach you things and so when you love him and you practice that god will enable you to grow in love and strength okay and you know that our target is for us to be holy, just like God is holy. Hmm? Won't you begin to do those things today that we talked about? 
as you do them, God will indeed embrace you. He will give you the grace to do them and you will grow in love and strength with God and be holy in Jesus' precious name. I love you so much. But Jesus loves you more, right? Okay, so this is Auntie E.C. signing out. I'm going to hand you over to Auntie Uju now because she has a song for you. So take care, guys. Bye. God bless you. And remember, be holy just like your Father in heaven is holy. I don't care what comes, nothing can separate me. Paul said, who can separate me from the love of God? Not even death can separate me. He said, behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Because we are connected. Tell somebody, I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. I'm connected. I said, yeah.